it's a leg day. We're gonna be doing a little bit of a warm up right now and then we're gonna jump into it. This is gonna be an example of a leg day to get you stronger, more explosive, and then we're gonna get some hypertrophy stuff in there. So we're gonna have some core stuff and then bust out some accessory stuff again. Strength's the name of the game because if you're not getting stronger, you're not gonna be able to get bigger by putting more weight in that hy hypertrophy rep range. So this is kind of an example you'd see. It's a little hybrid of what you'd see on our swole program at Fitness Culture combined with the power program because we do some Olympic lifting as well. But first things first, you gotta warm up. You gotta warm up. If you're not warming up properly, I'm telling you what, right now, leg day is the most important day to make sure you're warmed up properly. So we're gonna jump into that. Quick five, 10 minute warm up, and then we'll get into it. The whole purpose of a dynamic warm up is to go, get going not using any static movements. So everything we're doing, we're opening up the hips, we're getting the body warm, getting, raising the core temperature, and then using these big muscles, the big leg muscles, get them going, get them ready for movement. Also, stretching like this. Talk about reciprocal inhibition and why that works when you're stretching like this as we, you know, do a butt kick. As your hamstring contracts, your quad automatically has to relax, and that's what reciprocal inhibition is. This is Jake's favorite stretch right here. It's almost like a warrior two in yoga. It's a dancer pose in yoga. Oh, okay. It's a dancer pose. Oh. Welcome to the video. This one's gonna be a little bit different. It's a leg day. We're really training some explosive movements, active warm up here, and then also just kind of doing some prehab work here, warming up our core, getting the hip flexors warm. This is an exercise that I have not done a whole lot of, um, but we did two rounds of it. And then we have the toe touch, keeping your legs straight, then bending down, keeping your knees wide, bringing your arms up overhead. And this is really just to see where you have some postural imbalances, where you're tight. You know, for me, my shoulders are a little bit tight. My traps are a little bit tight. So I know, hey, spend some extra time foam rolling there. Next up, we have our bulldog complex. So this is to get the hips warmed up. This is to get that mobility in the hips. So we do out to the side, then we do kickbacks and then we actually just reverse it all. All of this stuff is in the Fitness Culture app. We do about 10 minutes of dynamic stretching before a power leg workout like we're gonna do today. So we have a Cossack squat here. Biggest thing is to stay low as you go from one side to the next, keeping that knee over the toe. All right, now we're moving into the actual workout part, starting off with snatch. And this is really just to get that CNS going. Also, snatch, technical lift. I think it's one of probably the best all around lifts, it's, it's you know lower back, posterior chain, it's shoulders, it teaches you to be explosive. So if you're an athlete, or if you want to become a better athlete, this is a great exercise to do that, but it's technical. So you need to pay attention, and you need to probably you know, have somebody who knows what they're doing. Jake is obviously a great snatcher. Is that a word? Can I say snatcher? Greg, Jake has great snatch technique. He was a crossfitter, um, an Olympic lifter. I am USA weightlifting certified, and you can see that you know getting triple extension, so getting extension in the ankles, knees, and hips. I don't do as well of that, and I, I start moving the bar up before I'm actually all the way extended. Jake does a great job of extending and then getting his head through. But you know, this is a great way to warm up. Gets that CNS going before we jump into our expanded speed squat. So this is a plyometric type exercise. This is a power movement. So we have a resistance with the bands and then the weight. And the idea is to really not only jump up, but then you have to decelerate and you have to catch yourself and stop yourself and then jump again. So this one is definitely one that's again, we're focusing on power. We're focusing on being explosive here. And we only do three reps. From there, we have box squats. Box squats are a great way if you're coming back to squatting after being injured. My lower back is had been bothering me. So box squats, we stopped just before we hit 90 degrees. We had a warm up set. Well, this is actually our set of 12. We go 12, 10, 8, 6, 4 on these. And again, the biggest thing with this, go down to your butt, hits that pad, lets you know that you're there. 
and then you're right back out. So it gives you that, that sense of security. You're not going super deep in the hole. Biggest thing, you wanna force those knees out while you're squatting. You don't wanna let those knees start caving in, especially as it gets heavy. This is our heavy set here, going down, working, pushing through, and then we have a banded TKE. So this is actually a quad movement. That band is pulling my quad forward and it's almost like a leg extension. We're going sets of 10 here on each side in between. And then this is just a good prehab one. Good to strengthen the muscles, the ligaments around the knee. And we do them as a superset. From there, we're doing a single leg RDL. Now this one's a little bit more difficult. If you have a hard time doing these, you can do dumbbells in each hand. So holding a dumbbell in each hand and doing a single leg is going to be a little bit easier. And then if you can't do single leg, do double leg. We're supersetting that. We have 10 reps of the single leg, single leg with a lunge. We're doing 12 reps here total or six on each leg. These ones are the big thing is to keep that knee over the toe, push up, and again, 12 reps total. Nice thing is when you're in your own gym, you can drop the weights. No one's gonna yell at you. And then we have the GHD hamstring curl. So basically, this is the king of hamstring exercises in my opinion. You gotta go down and then you see I don't break at my hips. I flex my, my quads, my glutes, and then I use my hamstrings to curl my body back up. We got eight reps there. And then we got a reverse hyperextension here. This is a great one for traction on that lower back for me. Really helps my lower back stay healthy at that bottom position. You can almost feel like space in between your spinal column. And then we have a leg extension here. We have one and a quarter reps. So all the way up, down a quarter, back up, 12 of these. So it's 12 one and a quarter reps. So, you know, it might sound like, oh, 12 is not that hard, but when you're doing a one and a quarter for each rep, it's a lot more difficult. I slightly point my toe out when I do these. And again, it's all about that squeeze at the top. Supersetting the leg extensions with the leg curl, really concentrating on pushing my hips into that pad. And that is the reason why my arms are holding me up and I'm not just having my, my chest resting on this. By keeping my chest off the pad, my hips are actively pressing into the pad, making sure I'm using only my hamstrings and no momentum. And then the last thing with this is a standing calf raise. So it's a tricep all the way up, squeeze, and then stretch at the bottom. That stretch is the most important part in my opinion on this, because it allows you to get that optimal contraction at the top. New fitness culture shoes are looking good. These are gonna be released in a few weeks, guys. Um, if you're part of the fitness culture app, you're gonna get them a chance at them first. Today's a prime example. There's gonna be days in life, you just don't feel like it. You come in, your mind's elsewhere, your lifting partner can tell, and I'm glad Jake was here to really just kind of be like, hey, you gotta go. You gotta fake it till you make it type of a thing. And I think that had this been a time where it would have just been me in there, I put up a video the other day about the 10 things I do for successful habits in the gym. And a lot of people were saying, oh, you know, like I get better workouts and I'm alone. I'm gonna call bullshit on that. If you get a good training partner, a good training partner is gonna grab you and lift you up when you need to, and you need to do the same for that training partner when it comes time. But if you don't have that, it's easy to, to not know how hard you're pushing yourself, your thoughts are elsewhere, you got a lot of things going on in life, and I'm not saying that, that you're not allowed to have that, but that training partner says, nah, we're not, we're not slacking today. We got, we got this many sets, we got this kind of weight. You did, you did this weight you know, a month ago. It's time to, time to up it. So we kind of keep each other accountable and that's what having that training partner does is to keep you accountable. So whether it's an app, whether it's a partner, you need to go on and be able to see what you've done and what you, where you've been. Otherwise, you don't know where you're going. If you have a plan and you know where you've been, you can see, okay, I, pr I progressed, progressed, progressed. Things you know might have slowed down a little bit. Okay, let's let's look at changing something up. But prime example of in life, there can be times you just don't don't feel like it. You don't feel like you know being in a relationship. You don't feel like doing that job. You don't feel like whatever it is. There's things you got to go through. If you make a commitment, you need to look at the situation. And there's things I didn't do well. I didn't I didn't go to bed early last night. I stayed up too damn late. I, I woke up this morning. Didn't get my nutrition on point. So it's all those little things, little things over and over again. Those little things, they add up. Little things matter. Because if you don't do the little things right, you're not gonna come in and do the big things right. 
You feel it. There's this change. You're not doing everything you can to get better. And that, that's the biggest thing. Get better. Before you come in and work out, hone in on what it is going to be that day. That's a leg day. If you guys want to see more of this, check out Fitness Culture's website. Also, obviously, I got tons of videos on my channel. Make sure you guys like and subscribe if you haven't. I'm going to go get a little shake.